hi everyone welcome back to my youtube channel hope you're doing good hope you had a lovely weekend so we are back at it um today we are going to look at a button down shirt dress for females for ladies uh, it's going to have a collar it's going to have some short sleeves and uh it's going to have buttons pinned those pinned buttons going down from the collar to down but it's going to be a short one you can make it long if you want but it's going to be a short one it's a it's fitted not round so it's going to be a fitted wait a straight fitted button collared shirt dress for the ladies if you haven't subscribed please do uh if you're a new viewer welcome 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 we are a creative family and we post videos i post videos every wednesday and uh yeah tutorials sewing tutorials fashion uh tutorials fashion hacks vlogs depends on what i decided to create for you guys and what i'm deciding to showcase so yeah for today let's get it into that all right guys don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe don't forget to share thank you guys all right yes so um we start off by folding our fabric into two we are going to cut um normally when we are cutting dresses we cut the front and back together but for this one we're going to start with the front and you see those 2.5 inches that i've just shown you it's what i'm going to mark first when you're folding keep in mind that you're going to have you're supposed to have um let me let me call it starting um folding allowance for where the buttons are going to go so that's what i'm marking for now then after that when you're folding uh put your button allowance which ranges from two inches to it's actually best to have 2.5 inches to three inches normally that's the three inches is the standard 2.5 is when you don't want that part where the buttons sit to be really big but again it also depends on the buttons you're going to add me i'm going to put those those buttons that are press on press on buttons and they're the small size so 2.5 inches is enough for me so from that line that you've marked make sure you have your hip divide by four so that so that's where you fold from okay so after marking that we're going to mark our length the length of the dress i am working with the 40 inches then you're going to add uh, at the bottom so here where i'm marking is the top i i wanted the design to flow the way it is so i wanted to start from down the way you see i wanted the to start from the bottom down so i added my two inch hemming allowance two inches so that's 42 inches though i didn't notice that um you couldn't see the extreme end but don't worry so much because that's just the bottom bit which is two inches for the hemming allowance what we need most is here up so now i'm going to mark the front uh neck depth which is three inches yeah so i'm marking my three inches then i'm marking my uh waist waist measurement which is at 15 inches 
from shoulder to waist. This straight line that you're seeing up here is the um, is the shoulder line. So that's where I'm getting all my measurements from. Now I'm marking 25 inches to be my shoulder to hip um, hip measurement. And then I repeat the same on the other side because I want to draw a joining line. So the, mark the waist at 15 inches and mark the hip at 25 inches. Remember we already marked our length of the dress. So that's okay. So just join those lines that you've just drawn as seen. All right. So now we are going to mark a... Uh, uh, three inches for the neck width. Remember we marked three inches for the neck depth. Now we are marking three inches for the neck width. And now you're going to get your French curve and try to draw a curve. Some of us can freestyle it, freehand it. Yeah, so I did that. Then um, uh, my shoulder to shoulder, that's the nape measurement. Or you can call it shoulder to shoulder, was 16 um, inches. So 16 divided by 2 is 8 inches. And that's what I marked on the shoulder line. And now going down, I mark 9 inches. Going down like a shoulder to a purchased measurement. That's what I marked. So sometimes if you want, you can mark the same measurement for the neck. Is the same measurement you mark from the shoulder to a purchased but I prefer to have um, like space in the armhole area. So I add an extra inch because remember we are going to deduct one inch for the slant. You get what I'm saying? So since we are going to deduct one inch, that's the one inch that I've just marked for the shoulder slant. Now we are going to mark the eight inches of the shoulder measurement, shoulder to shoulder measurement on the chest line on the upper chest line and then draw a straight line joining the upper chest line to the shoulder line and now we're going to mark our best measurement best measurement divided by four which is 10 inches and now we're going on the waist so also get your waist measurement divided by four i'm using eight inches at the waist so mark that eight inches then uh, we're going to go on the hip measurement divide by four me i'm using 11 so that is what i'm marking and what you mark on your hip is what you mark on the hemline because uh we are, this dress we are making is a straight dress not pencil not flared not round it's a straight dress so whatever measurement you mark on your hip is what you mark on the hem so here i'm i've put my tape measure starting on the slant on the shoulder slant then divide that by four from the shoulder slant to the upper chest measurement remember i had eight inches so divided by four that's at the four inch mark so at the four inch mark go in by 0 0.5 inches remember we are cut now we are we are shaping the armhole for the front for easy movement of the arm you have to deduct that 0 0.5 so that the person's arm can move easily so just draw your curve if you have a french curve do that i had it but i prefer to to freestyle it and good thing is you can get what i'm doing so you're going to take your curve straight to where you marked your bust measurement. Then from the bust measurement to the waist measurement, then from waist measurement to your hip, and then straight down to your hem. And uh, yeah, I think now we are done with the, with the front panel. So here I'm just adding a 0 0.5 inch allowance at the shoulder. That's the only, no, it's not the only allowance, but it's, uh, yeah, as you can see, I kept on adding allowance of 0 0.5. Because um, this dress, I wanted it a bit fitted. I didn't want it to have, like, to be very big, so that's why. But when you're cutting, start from the allowance, from the button allowance that we left. And guys, one more important thing to note i forgot to tell you in the start whatever measurement you're making 
whatever horizontal measurement you're making, it has to start from the line, that white line that I drew for the uh, button, button what? Button allowance. When you when you're marking your measurements, do not include the 2.5 inches of the button allowance. Please do not, because if you do, that means the dress will be very small and you won't have the button allowance left to work with. So whatever measure, horizontal measurement you're making, make sure it starts from that white mark of the button allowance, that white line that I drew in the beginning, the very, very first line that I drew in the beginning for the button allowance. So we are done with our first our front panel as you can see I'm just marking it and then uh, one other thing to do one last thing to do is we are going to separate it it has to be into two because remember we're going to use buttons we're going to separate into two but before we do that let's cut out the back panel so use the front front panel itself but when you when you're folding when you're putting it on top make sure to fold um the button allowance because at the back panel we do not need that button allowance since it's not going to be separated so that's what you do just fold it in fold in the 2.5 inches and then like a basic like a basic bodice that's what you do that's what you work with so now uh fold it after folding it twice i'm marking the neck depth which is half an inch because I was planning to put on a, to put a collar and with a collar you don't need to um, lower your neck your neck depth very much. So here I'm just redrawing the straight line because the armhole of the back pattern of the back panel has to be like it passes on the line. On the original line of the armhole for it it does you don't deduct the two the 0 0.5 inches you only deduct the deduct the 0 0.5 inches on the front panel for the back panel the sleeve is the same so the rest of the rest of the uh, of the panel or the bodice i just trace it out the only changes i made were on the armhole and on the neck depth but the rest are similar so cut it out as seen guys don't forget let me emphasize this don't forget when you're cutting when you're tracing out the back panel please 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 fold the button allowance the 2.5 inches for the button allowance fold it in on that line that you drew on the mark that you drew up the 2.5 fold it in then that's when you place the front panel on the back panel and remember before cutting out the back panel or before tracing it you have to fold the back panel into two also so the two panels of the back and the two panels of the front that is why we divide our horizontal measurements into four because there are four panels that we are dealing with so that's the back as you can see and that's the front so now we are going to get to joining you can see the front is longer than the back is wider than the back because of the button allowance so now here we're going to join the two panels together these are the sleeve patterns if you don't know how to cut sleeves watch my previous video and that those are the pockets i've done video i've done a video on this exact piece how i cut out how i drafted and cut um those sleeves the sleeve patterns how i came up with them how i calculated and everything so watch my previous video and then come back and then continue with this or you can first continue with this and then go cut and go watch the other one so this is how we are going to join it i'm joining the front panel with the back panel remember the back panel you do not divide it into two it's only the front panel that is divided into two and when you're placing them like this make sure the front um the right sides are facing so we're going to join there at the shoulder and on the sides only leave the armholes open 
leave the armholes open only join for now we only join the shoulder and the sides and then joining the sides we are going to i'm going to add a pocket on one side so before joining the pocket um, um put your tape measure at the armhole and then go down by one by eight inches go down by eight inches like that mark it and then notch it so that when you're on the sewing machine it doesn't um it doesn't shift you know where you're pinning so when you're pinning the pockets i think i've also done a no no i've not done a video on how to show pockets but uh yeah you can see it here i'm, I'm showing you so place them right sides facing still and stitch there as you can see and then stitch there also and then when you're done stitching they're going to be on the side like that as you can see that's where they're going to be remember you've already joined them so when you're stitching you go around like that yeah just follow my finger like that like that then go down okay so this is it uh i'm done joining as you can see i've joined the sleeves the shoulder sorry the shoulder i've also joined the sides i've joined the pocket um you can see my hand can go in very well so that's our pocket if you want you can put two pockets i prefer to put one on this one yeah so <clears throat> now we're going to join our sleeves to 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 the bodies to the main bodies so before you do that uh, turn it inside out because we are going to join the sleeves to the fabric right sides facing so you have to turn it on the inside turn it inside out and then you're going to have something like that guys if you've made it this way in the video please don't forget to like subscribe share yeah all right let's continue so now we're going to to fold it like that get your midpoint at the top of the sleeve just get your midpoint you see that curve in that shows that it's the front and then the other side is the back you can see they're different so that is why i cut them also like that because at the front of the armhole i reduced it by 0 0.5 inches so that is why it looks like that so right sides facing get your midpoint of the top of the sleeve and join it to the midpoint of the shoulder where the shoulder of the back and the front panels meet and then go around pinning pinning makes it easier when you're on the sewing machine so that the fabric doesn't move a lot so it's always good to always to use pins so yeah i pinned going around and you're going to see that my sleeve fits perfectly plus it's sewing allowance is also there for joining it so just go around like that i'm sorry you can't see it very clearly but if you follow my previous video and see how to cut the sleeve pattern you get to see you get to and you get to do it you get to realize it's actually very easy to cut out very easy to calculate and very easy to join because it fits perfectly so just go around like that pinning until you come to the end remember to leave your sewing allowance for joining the sleeve at the end so yeah i'm going to just stitch around there and then repeat the same procedure on the other sleeve don't forget to align the front with the front the front of the sleeve with the front of the front panel and then also align the back of the sleeve with the back of the uh with the back panels so i'm going to repeat the same on this other side of camera yeah and then i'll show you the result so this is it after joining as you can see i've finished joining both sleeves though they are still open uh, i wanted to show them to you before closing them up so that's how my sleeves look they are very neat they fit perfectly yeah 
they look really really good so now i'm going to uh hem hem the i'm going to hem the sleeve if you if you watch the other video you'll see how much hemming allowance i left so it's what i'm going to use to hem the sleeve so yeah, yeah i'm just going to fold it in twice not once i'm going to fold it in twice because it's not overlooked at the moment just fold it in like that twice by if you're using a one inch as your hemming allowance just fold in by five zero point five inches and again by zero point five inches and then after that just join the sleeve join the sleeves where they meet just draw a straight line sew a straight line up to the armhole just there to join to join to the side of the of the bodice and repeat the same for this side too first hem after hemming join the sleeves to go up to the armhole and then i'll show you how it will look after here we are back as you can see i've finished hemming both the sleeves with my one two inches seam allowance i think i used two inches so i'm done hemming and uh yeah i'm just going to join i wanted to first show you the hemming done doing that done pinning so now i'm going to yeah that is it complete completely done you can see it's really really neat yeah i'm done hemming and i'm done joining that's how i join and it's really really neat so it's important to do neat work so that the client keeps coming back to give you more work more jobs so yeah keep that in mind so this is how the dress is looking so far so good and we are like 90 percent done now we are remaining with um with working on the button area and uh, the collar maybe hemming the dress at the bottom also so now to fold this we're going to fold. remember it was 2.5 inches so just get the midpoint uh, that's I think 1.75 get the midpoint fold it in and then fold it in again remember you're supposed to fold in twice and then pin pin it on the on the line on the button line that you you created of 2.5 make sure it doesn't go beyond that otherwise it will be smaller so just keep pinning 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 until you get done with the whole um with the whole front and you're going to have to do the same for the other one though i had already done the other one so i'm just showing you on this second one remember there are two front panels so i worked with the other one first and now i'm working on this one to show you how i did the other one so just pin around make sure you're only folding in the 2.5 inches but you're making a double fold that's 1.75 plus 1.75 no actually gone beyond uh, so yeah that's it you can see the other side is pinned and this side is also pinned and then it sits right on top so that's exactly what i want that's why i was telling you don't go beyond the 2.5 inches it sits right on top it looks really measured really neat yeah so that is it i've finished stitching you can no longer see the pins so I've finished stitching and you can see it sits right on top. Now we are going to work with the with the collar. That's where I'm going to put my buttons. And uh, I think I'll space them by four inches because that's normally what I do. So now we're going to get our collar. I was going to use these normal shirt collars, but then <laughs> A friend of mine walked by when I was trying it on to see its feet and she told she advised me she advised me to not put a collar because it was really looking beautiful the way it was so I decided to just use bias tape I make my own bias tape using the fabric that's available so 
yeah that's what i'm calculating so go around your neck make sure to do this after joining in the button area so that you get a perfect measurement so mine was two twenty one point um two five actually i remember I, if i remember correctly so it was twenty one point two five and then that that's in the width so that's what i'm going to mark the 21.25 and then after that i uh i mark the folding in allowance because you're not going to leave it open like that so you fold in i added two inches but i actually only needed one inch so just add one inch to that because at the end I actually ended up cutting off the extra one inch and I only used one inch and then um, the length I used uh, two inches I didn't want a very big bias and I also didn't want a very tiny one so I went with two inches because it was enough for me I was just going to I'm just I'm going to show you how to use it so two inches is my my i think that's the length yeah so i just marked it there then drew a straight line and cut off the excess so I just cut off the excess sorry guys i have to repeat this but if you like the video so far please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button it actually helps me don't forget to hit that subscribe button because yeah it does help too we are growing slowly by slowly and don't forget to share to your family and friends and whoever wants to learn how to sew can use my videos and uh yeah so now I'm marking the allowance, the one inch on per side, one inch on the other side and one inch on this side. I just didn't want to go beyond that. So then after that, I'm going to fold in. I'm going to do like a double fold on either side and then fold the middle part, as you can see. Create like a, something like a pipe. So then when adding i've also done a video on how to make bias and how to to attach it to fabric so you can if you can't if you don't really get what i'm doing here and it's not very clear because i'm my patterns are really heavy you can go back and get my video for how to draft a how to how to do, make bias tape and how to use it i have it i posted it last year so now just keep doing that fold in uh, about 0 0.5 inches on either side and then fold it again i think now it's a bit clear so that's what i just kept doing all round while pinning it Again, pinning is very important if you sew it so that your fabric doesn't keep shifting. So that's what I keep that's what I kept doing. Fold in once, fold in twice and fold thrice. I folded three times for this. So just keep doing that. But I'm pretty sure now you see what I am actually doing. That's why I came closer to the camera so that you could be able to see. Because from afar you couldn't tell because of the heavy patterns. But now I'm sure you can see and tell what I'm doing. So just go around the whole collar. As you can see that's where I've pinned. Yes, you can see it finished pinning now I'm going to take it to the machine and sew around when using bias you can fold it again on the inside but I preferred it stay on the outside to, to kind of look like a bishop collar but simpler and smaller so yeah that's what I did and that's how my finished fabric looks like
my finished product looks like and yeah we have our pocket so i'm only going to him and add the press on buttons all right guys thanks a lot for watching bye Thank you.